Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Wait, a no bullshit about the Xbox 360 from the guy who's constantly riding its ass. Non-stop saying how it's a bad console that explodes upon impact or even minor use. Well, you know what? I think I had an epiphany or maybe just a nervous breakdown, but at one point I simply said to myself, why am I fucking myself out of gaming on this thing? What, because it blows up? All these machines are going to break down eventually. I'm sure my PS3 will die sooner or later. It's only a matter of time. You play these things enough and they break down. And then I thought to myself, maybe my 360s kept going because I played them a lot. Though, truth be told, the old models did red ring quite a bit. This one, however, seems a little bit different. So, forget about what you know about my so-called biased nature. And let's take an honest-to-goodness look at this console. First of all, from the hardware specifications, you know, what you see and what you get with the package, to the reasons why owning one of these things is actually worthwhile, even after all is said and done about red rings and all this shit. And honestly, the red ring of death was an issue caused by older hardware. I think they may have finally resolved it, because issues that I would have early on, even with other Xboxes, are completely absent. But anyway, let's get the show on the road, starting with a review of the actual console itself. Which I'm sure so many people are excited as hell about since, you know, there's probably like 800 shaky cam versions of the same shit online, but let me see if I can spice shit up a little by making it a little bit more interesting. Anyway, here we go. So, okay, the Xbox. Not much has changed. This one is black, not white like the previous models, like the pros and arcades. One difference to make note of immediately, though, is a 120 gig hard drive. It's humongous. And I'm telling you right now, running out of space is near impossible. But really, not a hell of a lot has changed from what I can tell. It still looks exactly like the Pro, except it's a different color. Uh, again, no real differences aside from the hard drive, and I guess the fact that the arcade lacks an HDMI port, which is odd if you ask me. But at the same time, when you're paying less money, I guess it pans out. And if the arcade does in fact have an HDMI port, then tell me exactly why my friend, Carnage, lacks an HDMI port on his arcade. I spent like friggin' five minutes looking for it on this console. I couldn't find it. It was ridiculous. Anyway, the console is well made. I think this one is actually better designed than the originals because it feels... It has a heavier weight to it. Like, it's not made of... Completely made of plastic, let's say, like the first one was. The original Xbox 360 felt chintzy, cheap. The faceplate would pop off very easily. Not the case with this one. Even from the weight of the box alone, I knew something was different. Now, let's move on to something quite important, or at least I'm told it's important. I'm being told one of the main reasons these new units don't blow up so easily, or rather that they run smoother than the last ones, is because of these little grooves in the power unit, which allow it to kind of blow out excess air or something like that. Aside from that, it just keeps it cool. It's also different from the original. It's smaller, it feels more compact, and again, it just feels better made than the previous model. The plug is also different, but I don't know if that's a big deal. One other thing to take note of is this serial number here. Apparently, if your serial number looks like this, you have a Jasper unit. Now, if I'm wrong, feel free to let me know that I'm a moron and got it wrong, but from what I've been told, the serial number, if it reads like this, it does in fact mean you have a Jasper unit. I do in fact remember the voltage on the previous unit did not match that. Okay, so you're saying that's all well and good, but how's the control, since control is like one of the key elements to playing any video game? Well, like the actual unit itself, not a hell of a lot has changed, really, from the aesthetic design, anyway, I can say that much. As you can clearly see here, it's exactly the same as any other 360 controller. There are no differences, though I'll tell you, the new maybe they redesigned it or something, because the D-pad doesn't feel as shitty, and all in all, it was always a sturdy and well-designed controller. Do I still prefer the PS3 controller? Uh, yes and no, it depends. 360 controller has always been better for certain games, in my opinion, like racing and first-person shooting, where... The PS3 controller just feels dead set for, like, RPGs and third-person action games, but, you know, take your pick. It's up to you. Player's choice, let's say, in this case. Okay. Now we get to what I'm famous for. Ranting. And I have a few rants. Elite? Let me ask you something. What the fuck is Elite about this? Are you fucking kidding me? For the price of this thing, it's the most elite model of the 360, and you can't even include a goddamn HDMI wire, or at least component wires? Nope. This is all you get in the box, Kitty Vinkies. Just the red, yellow, and white wires. What are they called? The AV component wires? The only thing these are good for is capturing off shitty hardware like my game bridge over here. This is garbage. Elite, give me a fucking HDMI cable. 
Now let's see, what else is on my fucking agenda? All right! Yet another example of Microsoft being cheap motherfuckers. They don't even give you anything to recharge your controller with. They give you two Duracell batteries, if you even get Duracell. Some people get energizers, apparently. And this little plastic thing that, honestly, it doesn't quite fit on right, Microsoft. Couldn't tell you why that is, but I fixed it myself. But yeah, this is a problem. Even the PS3 comes with a way to charge the fucking controller. What the fuck is this shit? Rechargeables are death, motherfuckers! Okay, and last but not least, one final complaint. Why in the name of God and all that is holy would you change the design of the actual headset that worked so fucking well in the past? Why is it just this little thing that pushes in? Do you know how many fucking times I've had this thing fall out when I've been using it? Or how the sound cuts because it comes out just a tad? Look at how easy this is to get in with one hand without even trying. And look at how it moves. This doesn't work, Microsoft. This was a shitty choice. It falls out too fucking much! But okay, all ranting aside, this is actually a very nice console. Feels slightly redesigned, but the same trusty unit you had. Hopefully it doesn't blow up, but these things have a history of those. That sort of event happening, let's say. But some people never get it, some people get it right away. It's like pulling a fucking lie out of a hat. You know, you just, you're, you're taking your bet, and you're placing your money with them, and you're hoping the goddamn thing doesn't break. But, you know, they do. I'm not gonna lie to you. These things do red ring. A lot. Statistically speaking, apparently 54 units out of 1,700 or something red ringed or some shit like that. I don't, I really don't care. I'm not into that crap anymore, looking at these stats and game rankings and all this junk. I hate those fucking sites anyway, to begin with. Now... Let's look at a reason why I'm back on the 360, personally, from my vantage point. And no, it wasn't for fucking Halo. That game is so fucking overrated. Okay, let's start with the interface. Slick, streamlined, and totally different from what I remember. They have completely transformed what Xbox Live used to be into one of the coolest looking things on Earth, as far as I'm concerned. The entire idea of having little avatars and icons and things like that works, but it's also just appealing to look at, and generally... If I have to put this up against comparison to, like, let's say, PSN, since, you know, I'm always with PS3, I gotta say, honestly, it's not a wonder Sony's getting their ass kicked when it comes to online. Not to mention, there is so much content on here, it is ridiculous. There are more exclusives on friggin' Xbox Live Arcade than I think I've ever seen on anything in my life. But aside from that, there are other reasons, other exclusives, such as... Yep, Raiden 4 is exclusive to the 360, and so are a lot of cool games. A lot of cool games that Sony fails to get, or RPGs they fail to get. In fact, they've lost their market hold because they lost all the great developers that used to publish games for them. Now they all go to the 360, and you get cool shit like this on the 360. And once Microsoft has it, they don't let it go. So if it's there, it's usually exclusive. Here's a good peek at something that's exclusive and fucking rules. So in closing, I'm going to say this, and most of you aren't going to believe this, but seriously, Sony, PSN is a fucking joke! There is so much more exclusive content on Microsoft's online side of things that literally your PSN looks like shit! So I say this to you with all graces, get it fucking fixed! Because for a dollar, I got something more fun than 90% of the shit on PSN! Yes, a fucking dollar! Take a look and learn, Sony! This is what you need! Creativity! Not promises and bullshit!